All right, my friends, Brian with VetSource here on a really beautiful Saturday afternoon with no humidity where we're going to follow up on the short video I made the other day regarding the ASR system here on our 96 Corvette uh, Bright Aqua Blue LT4, which has kind of become a trainer for us. It's actually pretty good because there's a lot of systems that I'm working on here and I can go through. Oh, and just for you guys that have watched me for a while, I did actually verify that in fact we've got a bad water pump on this car that's leaking so we'll be uh you know because we've got a ac compressor not working right we got a water pump failure uh i'm gonna go ahead and probably tear this whole thing down in a future video a couple of videos i'm sure and we'll redo everything on the front here so I look forward to that i probably won't get to that till after first of the year but anyway today we're gonna close the loop we're gonna finish talking about this asr system now asr is just basically an acronym for acceleration slip regulation system okay it was introduced on the 1992 corvettes and like you might figure acceleration slip regulation is simply just a term for traction control it's a fancy way to say this car has traction control now on the corvette um they've actually made this in a lot of cars they've made it a lot more advanced over the years since 1992 this is kind of what we would consider the first generation of traction control for the Corvette. Not the first car with traction control though. Um, traction control for GM at least was introduced all the way back in 1971. Believe it or not on the um, Buick Riviera. And it was called Max Track if I think I'm remembering this correctly. And it consisted of a wheel sensor, speed sensor in the front. It had a transmission sensor and an on and off switch and a, a basic little computer that would sense a differential between the wheel speed, the front wheel, and of course the transmission output speed going to the drive shaft. And if there's a difference, it would apply braking power to the rear wheels. So this system operates much of the same way, but a little bit more advanced. So let's go ahead and we'll go over and we'll, we'll look at our two handy Bibles here. We've got the owner's manual that comes in the car, and then we've got the service manual, which gives us a little more detail and we've actually got an ASR unit that's off the car so I can show you exactly what this looks like so the ASR first to make you understand it's not at all like the current stability track systems that are on all the new cars that have stability control and keep you from going in the ditch um, you can actually still put yourself in the ditch with one of these cars uh, especially if you get overconfident when it's raining and such so um, basically the first thing I'm going to show you here is that the the service manual itself right has approximately 147 pages describing the abs and the asr now the asr works in conjunction with the abs system but it is a separate system by itself it uses some of the same sensors uh to to normalize behavior of the car and of course you've got some graphics here that are good normal braking mode You've got ABS hold mode, you've got ABS decrease mode, and you've also got the ASR mode, right? Which kind of gives you a diagram of wheels. Uh, there's your ABS ASR pump built into one unit on a 96. There's not a separate computer like there was on the earlier 92 through 93. 92, 93 is a separate, uh, no, 9293, I think 94 is a separate um, electronic brake control module and then the pumps different 95 and 96 it's all integrated together like the c5 and above electronic brake control modules and then of course just a diagram showing you how brake fluid is transferred and it kind of shows you the circuit the prime pump and things and how the fluid transmits back to the rear wheels so just to give you a basic and i'm not going to get into all of this because there's a lot more here than i can cover in one video but essentially you know, I, reading straight from there, the traction utilization is a function of the design, tire design, inflation pressure, tire load, tire slip angle, and the level of percent slip and road conditions. Now, what that's basically telling you is, especially on a C4, keep your tires at the proper tire pressure. And if you don't have the low tire pressure warning system, which I've gone over before, you need to get out and manually check your tires because that really affects the way the car runs. It actually will, will ride really bad and really rough. So the ASR system uses engine spark retard, throttle close down, and rear brake intervention to provide enhanced acceleration and vehicle stability. ASR provides well-balanced performance over a variety of road conditions, blah, blah, blah. It's capable of functioning up to maximum vehicle speed. 
The system enhances, this is your basically your, your basic description. The system enhances the following general vehicle characteristics, directional control, traction, and maneuverability, right? And it accomplishes these goals through use of wheel speed information, as well as vehicle speed to get traction priority at low speeds, uh, speed difference of the non, I'm sorry, I got distracted there. Speed difference of non-driven front wheels and then vehicle acceleration throttle position and then brake applied input. And then what it normally does here is it provides um, the following inputs or integrations to make it work. The following methods, the spark retard, the throttle close down and the rear brake intervention, right? Sorry, this, this dog always distracts me, man. He, he ends up video bombing me every time I turn around. So sorry, I got distracted there. <clears throat> anyway, so these are basic, the basic functions of this system, right? And then of course, what it tells you here is it basically has three things it can do, or two things. It'll give you engine torque control, which is controlled with the one or more devices which affect air, fuel, and spark firing angle. And in this case on the Corvette, it provides feedback to the throttle cable and it also adjusts the spark on the engine to retard spark so it won't go out of control. And then of course it will apply brakes uh, pressure in the back um, if it senses that the car is losing control. Now, one thing to notice on a Corvette, it will only occur below vehicle speed of 50 miles per hour, but above 50 miles per hour, engine torque control results only from spark retard and throttle close down. That's one thing to consider because I see a lot of people using their cars and they get overconfident with them in the rain, especially, and that's where they lose control because, you know, a C4 suspension setup, I kind of liken it to a rubber band that's stretched to the edge of its uh, maximum elasticity. And once it lets go, guys, it's like a rubber band snapping and breaking. You'll end up either ditch surfing it or facing the wrong direction in about half a second, and you really won't know what happened to you. Now, the interesting thing, too, is in the owner's manual, they do take about 10 sentences to mention the ASR system uh, back behind the ABS system. And, of course, they tell you it's got a traction control system called ASR, limits wheel spin, especially useful in slippery road condition operates only if it senses the rear wheels are spinning too much or beginning to lose traction when this happens the system works the rear brakes and reduces engine power to limit wheel spin that sentence right there is exactly the perfect distillation of what this is telling you this system does and that's all it does it doesn't do anything else so it tells you if the asr is active if it's going on um, if it tells you if it's in cruise control while the asr system uh, activates it'll turn it off and then of course it'll give you the service ASR if this little piece right here is not working right. And I'll show you that here in just a second. So with the warning light on, system will not limit wheel spin. So basic information, if you got your owner's manual, it's on page 4-8. And of course back here on 280 and 81, it actually does show you the warning lights and gives you a little more information about what's going on with these. Now let me show you exactly how this system works inside the car. Okay, so what we've got here, dog, come here. Just keeping track of the dog, guys. All right, so when you come in, of course, if you've got a 92 through 96 Corvette, you're going to notice this little graphic, which, you know, I, I kind of chuckle because they couldn't have done this any better. It's got a Corvette with little squiggly lines behind it, which anybody that's anybody understands uh, that would mean your car is out of control or losing traction. Now, what really is funny is that I've had guys that have bought cars and had these and they get frustrated because they go, man, I try to get in the car and I can't do a burnout. The car won't let me do a burnout. Um, in fact, it pushes back up on the gas pedal at me. And it's a rather amusing because they don't understand how this system works. So, of course, when you come over here, you're going to see we've got our lights that are flashing to let us know what's going on. And then if I come back over here and I just press that button, right? Then we go back and it tells me the ASR is turned off. So that means it is not operating the system. The default setting every time you turn on the car is gonna be for this to be on. Now, of course, again, you can consider this a nanny device, which really it is, but the truth is it's, it's there to keep you safe uh, and keep you from being silly. And of course, if you're wanting to be a little more serious and or spirited driving and uh, do a burnout when you take off, you won't be able to, because what it'll do is you won't be able to get, I can't get the key out of the ignition, guys. You won't be able to get the desired response. So, 
just as an overview here real quick of the whole system. So you've got this control mechanism here. There is a diode inside the wiring harness that runs back here that controls the activation of brake fluid. And then of course over here, let's see if I can find it on this one. Uh, there is, oops, don't break that, Brian. Well, there was a, oh, you know what? The prime line is different. There's a prime line that separates from there under a distribution block and it actually sends the fluid back directly so it can work and not cause problems. Now, the other part of the system in the dash here, there's a lateral accelerometer buried behind the radio that's bolted to the transmission tunnel that uses that for very basic yaw control, but again, it's not like the newer cars. And then, well, let me see if I can get this off of here. Bear with me for a second. Remember not to lock the keys in the car. Okay, and then underneath here, and of course, it's underneath this panel, this storage compartment used to be able, you could access this in the earlier Corvettes. Now you can't. They changed this so they didn't want people messing with it. So underneath here, oh, this has never been going into because I don't even ever see these with this still installed. Interesting. Huh. Underneath here is your entire electronic brake control system on this car and you can see how this main connector goes in here and the whole system became one integrated unit the older ones actually had the control module back behind here and the brake pump was here so everything is integrated this looks almost like a c5 brake control module but for some reason the brake control modules on a c5 are total junk <laughs> and they don't work they don't last they don't hold up everybody's screaming for them now and they're not supported these are extremely uh, well built. In fact, I barely sell these often at all. And of course, they are individual part numbers. 95 is different from 96 and vice versa. So that, other than your wheel speed sensors, is about the only, all the components to the system, to the ASR system. All right, and what it does here, okay? So in addition to the braking on the rear wheels what this is going to do is if it detects your tires spinning it's going to use this servo right as a feedback loop to actually pull back on the throttle cable now this is your throttle cable coming from here over to its final point on the throttle body right here okay but what it actually goes back into it starts out uh over here as a double cable no, these are singles, that's right, because it's a manual transmission. Automatic transmissions have four of these cables, uh, manuals have three. So there is where your accelerator cable goes back into your firewall right there. It feeds into this, and of course, the reason why this one is right next to the accelerator cable is because it's actually attached to the cruise servo right over here, since those are actually independent, or not independent, they're independent, but they're both together systems. And of course, here is your system that goes to your throttle cable. And what you would have here on an automatic is this cable would go over to your TV cable, your kickdown cable on the car. So let me show you what this actually does then. And of course you can see looking at it, here we go, Bosch made in Germany. So, dog. so let's take a look at this one and you can see how this is kind of a pretty neat system. And I will say that this is a very reliable system. It doesn't go bad. Uh, it doesn't break down very often. I get very few requests for this part. All right, so we take that cover off of there. And you can see what's underneath here. Of course, we've got Bosch with an actual, looks more like a Mercedes part number. If you ever dealt with part numbers on cars, Mercedes are divided up like this. And looking at it, you can see this is basically just three bell cranks, the kind of things you actually see on push-pull cables on aircraft. And I will say, I forgot to mention that this ASR, ABS systems, all the like, really originated with aircraft systems. Uh, in fact, I, I think the earliest patent I ever saw for an ABS system was from 1928, but back then the technology wasn't uh, good enough to have hydraulic pressures strong enough to where they could control the braking systems. So it sat and languished this patent for about 25 years until the airplane manufacturers could come up with it. And I think Jensen was one of the early originators of 
the ABS system on cars. And then, of course, Ford Thunderbirds, Lincolns, they started in 69 and 70. But then the traction control came into play, like I said, in 71. So now they've integrated. But you can see here, these are just bell cranks, right? With, and in fact, they use such a simple terminology for these. I saw it earlier. Yeah, there are four cams and then they're slug type retainers. Slug type, that, that amused me. So you can see the slug goes through here and then the cable wraps around here. And of course, this is your geared part right here. So if I take this and I turn this this way, you can kind of see that gear right there and it turns everything back. So once this is energized from the signal from the electronic brake control module, and it's a very simple connector, just a two prong connector. Once it's energized, it kicks this back and that's that feedback loop that you're feeling kicking the throttle, the, brake, the gas pedal back up on you. It's almost pushing it back up. And again, if you don't drive your Corvette and don't spin the tires, you will have never felt this. But for all of you that have tried to do it and left the ASR on, this is the actual servo motor that's making it do that. And see how they're tied into that geared drive right there? So it's a really cool technology, but it's very much misunderstood simply because nobody thinks about it and it, it's you know literally 10 sentences in the in the uh, owner's manual on how it's described and how it operates but be it be known it's not a stability track it is not a stability system it is simply just a uh, get out of the ditch free card that general motors installed on the corvettes and i really think like a lot of the other things that we've talked about with corvettes they started this just as a way to test it on the Corvettes and see how it would go from there. And of course it's done very well and now I think it's mandatory all the cars have to have this type of stuff just like with the tire pressure systems and everything else. So that's pretty much ASR system in a nutshell guys. If you want to have further information, again I always recommend if you've got a C4, go on to eBay, go on to Amazon, find yourself a service manual. These things are a wealth of information and it is dry reading but it is good reading, okay? And especially if you depend on a shop to take care of your car for you, you will be able to read this and know if they're talking vo uh, voodoo to you or, or like that uh, that video, I forget that kid's name, who is he? Long Beach Griffey did the joke video about the mechanic shop working on your car, but definitely a wealth of information to have. Invest in one of these, it's good. And of course, watch my videos because I'll keep talking about this because I do like talking about all these individual systems on the Corvette. So till next time, my friends, I'll talk to you then and uh, we'll see what's going on. Make sure if you got any questions for me, just leave them in the comments below. Or if you've got a suggestion for another video on another system you're looking for in the Corvettes, let me know. Uh, we'll get to it eventually, okay? See you guys and have a good, uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend.